Dr. Uttam Sina, one of the editors of the Modi Doctrine, uh, Waterman of India, to speak on the water sector, timely interventions. Um, thank you, uh, Anirban. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, working with uh, Shama Prashad on the various books that have come out in the last uh, three years with, with particular attention. Uh, on the water issues, whether it's in the regional context or whether it's learning from the international dimensions or whether looking at the water sector domestically as well, which uh, this chapter in this edited volume does, uh, titled as Timely Intervention. And I think uh, there can't be any bigger or greater or a more interlinked issue that water presents that needs such kind of interventions. And, and what's significant, uh, really, uh, in this government's outlook in the water sector is, is to think about this sector as, as a crucial, critical link to the larger economic growth and, and the larger development of the country. And there are, therefore, certain striking features that come about in terms of policy thinking and in terms of, of policy implementation. Of course, we are in a, in a progress uh, now. Uh, we can't say that everything has been resolved in the water sector. But I think there is a momentum that is built up. And this momentum needs to be uh, looked at uh, and considered uh, strongly. Uh, we will now move more towards, I think, outputs, uh, less to outputs and more outcomes in the water sector. And that's two, three years down the line from now we will uh, definitely witness this sort of fundamental change. Largely, the framework of this government, uh, and if I have to take a few steps back and look at how this government works in terms of its governance and in terms of delivery, I think quite clearly the framework is a changed framework now, uh, what we call as a paradigm shift. Uh, the earlier framework uh, of policy initiation was quite clearly status quoist. Uh, patronage oriented, I would say. We're moving more to a framework that is far more uh, transparent, uh, far more rule-based, and I think that's very important when you look at the water sector, how to frame new rules based on new knowledge, based on new scientific thinking, and how to, how to make people and the citizen participate in the larger decision-making exercise. So I think quite clearly we must acknowledge that there is a paradigm shift, the framework has shifted, in terms of how you initiate policy and how you deliver that policy. And the water sector clearly demonstrates that kind of uh, uh, a policy shift. How and what are the elements of those paradigm shifts is something that I've analyzed in, 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 in this uh, paper. I think the first element of this paradigm shift is there are structural changes that is happening, uh, largely. Largely happening in all sectors, but I think in particularly uh, happening in, in the water sector. And I think it's not only just to look at water sector from an administrative perspective. You know, you don't just need to administer water, but what probably you need to do is bring in the other elements that sort of uplift water sector in the minds of the people and in terms of the economic returns. And I think, therefore, the cultural, the sort of sacredness of water, the aesthetic value of water in terms of development and planning is also put into the forefront. So not just merely administered that we've been doing for a long period of time and failed quite miserably in many of the administrative sector, but moving it away from the complex hydrological bureaucracy, simply looking at water in terms of population and territory, and moving into a more interlinked, interconnected, interdisciplinary and interministerial management of water is an important shift that has come about uh, in this government assets, and therefore that has been aided and backed by a lot of institutional reforms. And one of the elements of water sector uh, um, that has been brought forth by, by the Prime Minister, and the Prime Minister plays an important leadership role here, you know, in terms of, of the water sector. I mean, one of his first statements after winning the elections was uh, saying that, you know, uh, Ganga is my ma. And if you look at history of how, how leadership have in some sense usurped the water sector is quite an interesting analysis. Look at Mao, how he used uh, the river as an important element of rebuilding his, his political power in China. But here I think the Prime Minister wants to use river as a great connector with a larger mass 
you know and therefore the movement and the prime minister's leadership ability to understand that movement is quite critical in the way he is is looked at and water and therefore all the elements in an important decision of water quite clearly lies in the prime minister's office uh, and, and and this is something really uh, quite remarkable how how he has sort of brought in a sort of persona into the water sector a persona that sort of drives and brings in new energy and new thinking uh, breaks away from the traditional old ways of planning and managing the water resources and this is quite striking when you look at how how the water sector is is developing um there is definitely a budgetary allocation which comes through the speeches and and the action that the prime minister talks about you can't just talk about water unless unless you don't have a budgetary allocation and it's remarkable that in the last 3 years there's been almost a 170% increase in, in in the budgetary allocation in the water sector which quite clearly means that water is central to the larger development of india if you look at the the budget of the rural development uh, it's 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 quite phenomenal uh, 87000 crore which was given in the last uh, 2016 2017 budget i think there's a great emphasis on irrigation uh, the realization that half of your arable <clears throat> land in india needs to be managed through the ability to manage your water sector and therefore the focus on irrigation the focus on your groundwater aquifers has sort of become an important element of irrigation that is linked to rural development that is linked to, to agriculture produce and that's the big challenge for india i mean the the relevance of managing the water sector is absolutely crucial because if you're looking at 30 years hence from now you have to produce 100 450 million uh, tons of food grain where does that come from that would obviously come from better management of your water resources better development better conservation better irrigation methods you know and i think the elements if you look at the domestic concerns that the prime minister has and this is one area which i have been looking at when he goes to the foreign land he carries three element and i have noticed this in israel whether he goes to germany whether he goes to netherland there's an element of water that he tries to bring in because innovation is very important uh, technology is very important and these two pillars form his real understanding the challenges of water so these three link to his larger engagement with the world itself so what is just not domestic here there is also a great deal of expertise and knowledge that can be brought from various different international bases in our own management of of, of water and i think that is uh, uh, something noteworthy that two important elements that have come about in the water sector as i said water needs to be viewed in terms of economic returns as well how much can you achieve out of water and i think the inland waterways which has come about with the national waters act last year is is a crucial driver to this and it's not only domestic because the cost of you know transport on the rivers obviously reduces when you compare it in, in terms of roadways in terms of railways but it also sort of brings in the regional dimension of of uh, uh, uh the waterways as well because if you manage your waterways domestically well in terms of navigation in terms of the utility in terms of economic returns you'll have to also crucially link it to the sub regional management of of development as well and therefore here the bbim concept or the bcim concept or our crucial relationship with bangladesh will become an important feature of this inland waterways and and the drive to sort of regenerate and relook at rivers uh in terms of communication in terms of transport is also very important and this has a sort of a uh, a double impact you know because when you look at waters in terms of waterways you'll have to also look at waters in terms of rejuvenation because you need the flow to have transport and i think these two are quite clearly interlinked and therefore that brings me to the last point of this government and and since brevity is the soul of wit i'll be brief here uh is how does administratively uh you know uh, the prime minister or the center brings in coordination and consultation with the states and and that's quite significant here because some of the changes that have come about water is you know a very emotive subject it's a political issue it's also a very divisive issues and and it's a state subject entry 17 in the constitution but if you're looking at water sector as an overall benefit as an overall developmental process you need effective coordination and cooperation with states and that's very important the federal way of looking at the water sector or infusing new understanding into the federal system is is quite uh, remarkable uh, and and there's been tangible and positive uh, interventions 
uh, to bring in this element of, of a larger understanding. The states and the center uh, work together uh, in terms of uh, positive movements uh, on the web sector. For example, uh, this overlapping departments and ministries that we see in, in water planning has been really sort of, uh, you know, shrunk into making it far more an effective body. And now we have what is called the National Water Commission, uh, which brings in all the data and the finding under one house, you know, and then distributes those data uh, to whoever needs it. So I think there is this element of sort of bringing in order into this vast and complex water sector. You know, order through institutional reforms, order through interministerial understanding and collaboration as well, even at the center. I think there's so many overlapping ministries that require coordination for effective uh, manage, uh, water management policies. And I think that ability the Prime Minister has to infuse a more interdisciplinary and interministerial uh, formation at the center when you try to bring in a very complex and interlinked issue like, uh, like water. And I think, therefore, if I have to retitle my uh, chapter uh, and not just say timely intervention, I would say the government is going with the flow, which means I think the government is understanding the true nature of water, the complexities of the water sector, the interlinked quality of the water sector. I think going with the flow is that understanding. But it's also trying to stem the rot, which is also very important, the way we managed water, the way we looked at the water sector. And that, I think, is, is some of the, uh, the real qualities of the functioning uh, of this government. And when you look at proper governance, if you look at governance to the people, water and the water sector will be a crucial component of that. Thank you. As crystal clear as water, uh, always, uh, Professor Sina, uh, Dr. Sina.